In this video, I'd like to talk about uh, some things that are not really that exciting, but they're important to have a understanding of and a knowledge of once you begin to working to start working with a DAW and writing music. Um, over time, you're going to end up with a lot of files, a lot of song files, project files, samples, sound sets, uh, sound fonts, field samples, just lots of data and it's important that in the very beginning you have a solid foundation of where all of this is being stored and if anything happens if you have a hard drive that fails or mistakenly move folders you can then remap everything within studio one and get back to what we all really want to do and that's making music so if you take a few minutes to really understand where everything is being stored and how to manage all of this it's going to save you uh lots of headaches in the future. So let's just go ahead and get started with covering um, file and content management within Studio One Three. First and foremost, let's take a look at where are our song files and project files actually being stored at when we create a new song or project. So if I choose create a new song, we can see here that this location is going to be your default location for every song, uh, project, and your presets, all that you're creating. They're all going to be saved to this one location. Now we can click on this box here and choose a different location. I can choose the desktop and select that and whatever I create is going to be saved there. But if you are not changing this, this is going to be your default location. And we set that up I'm going to come to Studio One, Options, Locations, and the User Data. This is where everything is going to go by default. Whatever you select here, so you, we can click that box and choose wherever we would like for our songs, projects, and presets. They're all going to be stored here. So whenever we come to that first screen to create a new song, this is what is going to be put in here by default. And then we can come in and rename this. If we don't, Studio One is by default going to put the current date and the name of whatever you have for the artist profile. And I've got Quanta here, so it's going to put the current date and the artist profile name. But we can, of course, rename that if we'd like. I'm going to go ahead and click OK to create the song. Now let's take a look at our options menu and see where everything is going to be stored at within the Studio One settings and how we can make changes or any adjustments that we may want to do. I'm going to press Control comma to bring up the options menu. We're already on the locations tab here and this is where we just were and saw the user data and again this is where you can change where the default location will be for your songs, projects, and presets. You can also adjust the autosave. You can turn that off by unchecking. You can also change how often the autosave feature is going to work. Now, when you're working with different songs, you may, and you're using the browser and you're bringing in audio, you may bring in some field samples or loops uh, from an outside source. If you leave this check, then Studio One is going to ask you if you would like to copy those external files to the song folder. So this location that's going to save the project file and all of the audio data, it's asking you if you want to save, say you downloaded an audio file to your desktop and you use that and you brought it into your song, uh, do you want to save that to this location as well to make a duplicate copy? And I would definitely recommend doing that and that just keeps everything neat and clean so that if you move the, the folder around that is the song, it's going to carry that audio with it. Next here we have file types. Now when we're browsing audio and looking for loops and files in the browser here to the right, everything that's listed here is are the type uh, of files that will show up. And we can actually even come in and add our own. We can choose the icon, put in the extension, and add an, a description there. If we have added some files and maybe there's some issues with those not working properly, we can select them 
and then click remove. Next, the sound sets. As with uh, the default location for your songs, projects, and presets, we have a default location for the sound sets, and we can choose that here. There's a little box. If we click, then we can navigate and choose where we would like for our sound sets to go. Studio One also will add this public one by itself. You can come to the add and add additional locations if you'd like to do that. You can also select a location and remove it by clicking here. And so while we're talking about sound sets, with this version of Studio One 3 Prime, it does come with two, actually I think four uh, sound sets, four different packages of sound sets. I don't have those installed right now, so how can we install the sound sets? There are several different ways that this can be done. I'm going to cancel out of here, come up to Studio One, navigate down to Studio One installation. Now here at the very top we can choose the location that we're going to install from. You can do it from your Personas count or you can select a location on your computer. Install to. You can then choose a specific location. This is going to pull that information from where we were in the options menu. Whatever you have set up as your default location. Below the configuration custom will allow you to choose which ones you specifically want by clicking or we can just choose a full installation and we will need to log in and after logging in you will see that it uh, checks everything that's included with your version of Studio One and then it will install it to your lo the locations that you or the location that you have chose here you would just then hit install if I come back to custom then again I can just go ahead and make any uh, selections that I would like here. And I really just want to have this uh, Studio One Instruments Volume 1 and 2 to be installed, but I'm going to go ahead and close out of here because I want to show you another way. Now, in your browser, if you go to the Personas website, you can log into your account and under My Products, Get All Content, you will then see everything that's included with your particular version of Studio One 3. And the Studio One Instruments Volume 1 and 2, this, these are the ones that I would like. So whichever ones you'd like, you could just click Download. And wherever you have your browser set to save the files, just be sure you choose Save File and hit OK. And now, I've already done this. My default location to save files from the web is to my desktop. So I now have the Studio One Instruments Volume 1 and Volume 2 here. Now what I could do is just double click on these and it will then install it to the default location that I have set up for sound sets. So just by double clicking on those uh, two items on the desktop. It will then install, they'll disappear from the desktop and they'll be in this folder and you'll then find them in the browser. The last way that I'd like to show you, and this is important to know, these other ways may seem convenient, but again, when you start working with the DAWs and Studio One and over time and you get so many files, it's really going to be helpful to know how to manually get to these uh, files and how to move them and change them if you have problems. And this also brings brings up the topic of storing your audio files on a separate drive because ideally you want to have them on a drive that your operating system is not running on uh, and that your programs are not running on. So I have a external hard drive attached. If I come to this PC, you can see that I've got this Toshiba hard drive. I'm going to double click there. I've created an audio folder. Studio One sound sets. I also created this folder. I'm going to double click there. 
Now I'm going to select these files and just put them in that folder. So if you're wondering about getting your sound sets onto an external drive, this is how you can do that. You can just create a folder where you'd like for them to be, drag all of the sound sets into that folder, and we can then add that new location within Studio One to pull these from. So I'm going to go ahead and close out, come back to Studio One. I'm going to control comma to bring up our options. Now under sound sets, I would like to add that external hard drive here. So I'm going to choose add, come to this PC. Here's our Toshiba, our audio folder. Now here is the Studio One sound sets where we just added those sound sets too, but they're not going to show up because they're not in a folder. We'll select that folder and hit apply. Now it's scanning and it's pulling all of those, all of that information into Studio One. So if I click OK, come to instruments, we now have those sound sets, the data in those sound sets is available for use here now. So that may seem a bit confusing and maybe a bit convoluted, um, but really if you spend some time with this and get a better understanding of how all of this works and where everything's stored, uh, trust me, it's going to help you out in the long run. Now let's come back to our options menu and move on to the instrument library. Now this is, I'm not going to spend too much time here because this is just similar uh, to the sound sets in that we can add locations here as well as selecting and removing. If you are using Studio One uh, 3 producer or professional or artist and professional, uh, there is going to be another tab here for your VST instruments and I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Studio One 2.6 to take a look at that tab. Now here we are in Studio One 2.6 producer, producer and we've covered these first few tabs here. They're, they're the same in this 2.6 version. Now uh, the Prime version of Studio One 3 that I was using did not have this VST plugins. Uh, so we'll take a look at that here and at the very top we have a scan at startup for uh, any VSTs. It's going to look for the folders that you have designated down here. Look to those locations for any new uh, VSTs that you may have installed. You can uncheck that if you don't want it to do that. And one thing that I'd really like to say about the VST locations, I have set this up this is just my recommendation and how I do things. I have two locations where I like to have my VST instruments. One, uh, these are for the 64-bit plugins. It would just be, now this is just for the PC, program files, VST. Now this x86 is for 32-bit plugins. In this way, if I install a VST instrument, depending on whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit, I'm going to choose one of these two and put every VST instrument in one of these folders. Otherwise, you could end up with folders being created by the program when you install it. Um, and you can end up with, say, you know, a lot of us have multiple DAWs. Some of the installation programs will put it in one of the DAWs folders, and it may not show up in another DAW after you install it. So if you create two separate ones, folders here, one for 32-bit, one for 64-bit, and just when you're going through the installation process for all of your VST instru instruments, be, choose, be sure to choose the correct folder and that each of them uh, are being put in these, then you're always going to know where they are. And uh, you're not going to end up opening up a program and it's not finding the latest instrument that you just put in. So this is just how I have that set up. And again, you can just use the add button to create a location. And so I just went to this PC, the C drive, program files. This is where the 64-bit 
programs are put at and the 64-bit VSTs. If I come back up, and the program files x86, this is for the 32-bit VSTs. And you can see there's the folder there. This just makes everything a lot cleaner to have just two folders and direct each of your DAWs to these two folders to look for when, it's, uh, when they're starting up. And that way you'll always be sure that your instruments are included in each DAW. Now the last thing I wanted to go over is if you say have your sound sets in a specific location and you're not happy with that location, you would like to move them, how can you go about doing that? Well, I don't normally have an external hard drive connected to my laptop and I put the, those sound sets in just a moment ago, uh, but I'm going to put them on to my laptop hard drive. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that location, the external hard drive, apply, OK. Now if I come to the instruments, that's still there for some reason, but that's okay. I'm going to navigate to the sound sets. And as you can see here, this is the default location that I've created for the sound sets to be installed to within Studio One. These ones that I downloaded, the Studio One Instruments Volume 1 and Volume 2, these are the same ones that I put on the external hard drive. They are not in this folder. But I wanted to show you, you know, one of the other methods in action in that if we double click, it should put them in here. Okay, and so I did see this change. I'm just going to go ahead and do the other one. Okay, so now you can see that they are both there. So I just wanted you to see that in action, that you have different ways of moving these around. And um, if we then come back this shouldn't change. I mean, they were still there. They probably would not have played it until I did that just now. But we are all set. And so that's how you can then move your sound sets around. Uh, if you are not happy with the current location and would like to uh, move them to a new place.